in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the reason why our worship is not perfected is because we think we have done so much then God added to it so we worship him as colleagues I don't worship him as a colleague he is the king he is my king take God out of the equation of my life I am absolutely useless there's nothing embarrassing about this if you are ashamed to acknowledge the might of God the psalmist said if the Lord had not been on our side he said now may Israel say if the Lord had not been by my side please in one minute I'd like you to open your mouth and count your blessings don't pretend he has not been faithful take your eyes away from that which you think he has not done and acknowledge him how can I be so ungrateful you have done well you have changed my life. You have given me what money cannot give. You have given me your presence. Look what you've done in this ministry. We acknowledge you. We are so blessed. Our souls are found rest. Oh Lord. Sing it with me. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks. When others are complaining, seeing the things they think you have not done, we are grateful. How dare we complain after all you have done? For we are so blessed. And our souls are found. One more time, just the voices. Worship him. Thanks. Reflect on the many things he's done in and through your life. For all you have done. We are so blessed and our souls Jesus Christ we thank you you are our confidence in this place tonight it is because of your presence that we know lives will be changed tonight we have come to hear you speak hallelujah Lord Jesus accept our coming here tonight as a reflection of our inadequacy in ourselves accept our coming tonight as a recognition of our limitations accept our coming tonight as a communication of our dependence on you for we will not be here if we did not trust you lord we trust you hallelujah please be seated god bless you hallelujah praise the lord this for someone is the message god came to give you tonight this act of worship please listen to me brothers and sisters the key to more of anything in your life is gratitude the key to more of anything in your life anything good 
is gratitude. He took five loaves and two fish. He lifted it up. And the Bible says he gave thanks. You know, sometimes we live in a world where there is such an appetite for more. More money, more fame, more this, more that. And now God wants to increase us. Motion is a sign of life. Stagnation is a sign of death. So God wants us to move forward. But you see, God's system is such that you never leave where you are to the next level until you thank him sufficiently for where you are. Hallelujah. Guilt, not guilt in a negative way, will never allow me to dare complain before God. There are too many stories in my life that show the faithfulness of God. I will be wicked and heartless to ever claim he's not faithful. So for me, if I do not have a language of gratitude, I rather not speak. I rather sing and worship him. There are too many reasons in my life. I am a testimony of how God can take a man from nothing to something. How would I be so stupid to complain? Shout around. He's given me what money cannot buy. His presence. Listen. If you have a property, they call you a rich man. But someone can bully you and collect it. The government can seize it from you. Are we together? If you have investments all over the world, they call you a business mogul. But everything can crash and fail in one day. Are we together? If you have a political position, it is not infinite. It is not everlasting. Are we together? Even if you are a monarch, the reality of death and time can catch up with you. But when he gives you his presence, there is no way to find it and collect it from you. It's not a commodity that belongs to this earth realm. It's a reality that is beyond this realm. It will buy anything the presence of God is the master capital. It's bigger than land. Bigger than degrees. Bigger than anything. Please believe me. The most expensive commodity is the presence of God. When you have it, you have access to kings and their treasures. When you have it, you have access to businessmen and their wisdom. When you have it, you have access to royalties and their sacrifices. They will bring to you the rewards of their years of labor and beg you to collect it in exchange for the presence of God. Never, never you think the presence of God is just a way of feeling spiritual. Then you quickly feel spiritual. Then you concentrate on what you think will make you successful. No, only a fool does that. The presence of God gave the nation of Israel gold and silver in one day, what they could not get in 430 years. The presence of God became for them a pillar of cloud by day and of fire by night. Hallelujah. You know, Sometimes, when you hear a man of God talk so much about the presence of God, please look up. It's easy to think the man of God is speaking because his life is now comfortable. You know, that's what people think in church. When a preacher is talking like this, you know, they feel ah, you are doing well, you are enjoying. Why will you not talk about the presence of God? But you need to ask how the person started. And what brought the person to the current level? Are we together? What you are seeing now is not a seed. It's a harvest. Are we together? Yes. Never covet any man's glory. Pay attention to the story. 
the story reveals the process the story reveals the sacrifice we live in a generation where we are obsessed with results and that is important but we focus so much on the end of the results we want finished products but we do not pay attention to how the things are made hallelujah what you are learning will give you anything you admire now so forget about the admiration and focus on the training the training will inevitably bring you to the place of glory father help us tonight in the name of jesus bless you good evening everybody just turn to your left and right and tell your neighbor good evening hallelujah praise the lord all right pick up your pen paper let's get to work there's a lot to do the glory revealed part two last week we started a series the glory revealed it's a series that is supposed to guide us excuse me and teach us the principles how a man's life can become a reflection of all the possibilities that consist in god hallelujah please try to get last week's teaching is free you can get it after the service especially for those who are online following us are so many people and we love you you're part of us the lord honor you in jesus name and i spoke to us last week and i started laying a foundation that the pursuit of godliness please listen the pursuit of godliness the pursuit of relevance in the kingdom begins with an encounter say an encounter the journey of a believer does not start with learning principles and laws and formulas business people teach you that if you want to arrive get formula a add it to b and that's important but anytime you begin to study anything outside of an encounter first it will waste your time and lead you to error because the kingdom is regulated by a person not just systems it is a person who created the systems so you have to encounter the person christ are we together so your journey does not begin by learning about tithes and offerings all the laws that we shared in the series before this they are very important but you must start with an encounter when you meet the person then he will guide you because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. There is a method. There is a formula. It seems right to a man. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. And um, we discussed the concept of glory. I'm just doing a quick recap. How that glory refers to the essence of a thing. The character. Are we together? The, 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 the word glory is from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek word is doxa. Is a reflection of the true nature when the true nature of a thing is expressed we call it the glory of that thing are we together now and then another interesting understanding of the word glory is the possibilities that that's the one i want us to pay attention to is the one that is relevant in this series the glory of a man means all the possibilities that are inherent within the man the glory of this mic is revealed in its ability to amplify sound are we together when you go to buy this mic now and they tell you this singular mic i'm holding is say two hundred thousand. you look at this until you connect it to something then you will see the potentials are we together this is two hundred thousand, for instance because it has an ability to amplify my sound so i can stand here and speak and people down the second overflow and everywhere can hear so the glory of this mic is the possibility inherent in it are we together now so when we talk of the glory of god it refers to all the possibilities that are encapsulated in the person god and that is reflected in the person christ because christ is the full expression of the image of god are we together so jesus came to open us up reveal to us the glory of the father an example of the manifestation of that glory was seen in the healings when he came to people they never knew he had the supernatural ability to heal and so he would tell someone pick up your mat stand up and go 
glory revealed. I did tell us last week that until glory is revealed, it cannot be appreciated. Glory that is concealed cannot be appreciated. If you buy a phone, the pack is only a packaging, but the real product is inside. If you keep the pack, even if it's for 10 years, it will not profit you. But when you open it, then you see the content and you appreciate everything that is there. There are phones, for instance, that can just make calls, text messages, and a few things. There are other phones that can browse at, at a level of speed. You can connect to several things, watch videos, and the rest. Those possibilities are the glory in the phone, which is an expression of the wisdom of the company that made it. So the phone reflects the excellency of Samsung or any other LG or whatever product. Are we together now? So Christ came as a manifestation of the glory of God. The invisible God, Yahweh, found earthly expression. And everything Jesus did was a sample of what God can do. He didn't show us everything. He only showed us small and said, you continue. And he sent the spirit of glory are we together to continue so the bible was not supposed to just end with jesus we are epistles we are an unfolding of other dimensions of glory that are possible if jesus were still on the earth would have written more than would have written probably there would have been an episode where he walked on a zinc and came down probably there would have been an episode where he made a dry ground to be full of water but the Holy Spirit came and through Jesus showed us an example that we should follow in his steps. So the goal of this series is to teach us the mystery behind spiritual alignment that can make a man become a reflector of the glory of God. That all there is, all that there is to you is not just your human nature. There is more. Say amen. Amen. So the glory of a thing reflects the possibilities. And um, we began to explain how that one of the keys to experiencing the glory of God is to believe that there is such a possibility. You see, brothers and sisters, God is not a man that he should lie. Are we together? Not the son of man that he should repent. If a Jimmy has 50,000 hidden in his suit pocket is hidden and we cannot see it if he tells me and says i have fifty thousand, my attitude towards him will show whether i believe it or not are we together if i tell you right now on this table there is a phone there is this assuming you cannot see it anything you cannot see you will have to use my person to validate your trust because you cannot see it are we together? So faith is that response that is entirely based on your perception of who God is. Because until there is a manifestation, you do not yet know. Once you have seen it once and again, it's no longer faith. It's called trust. Trust is based on a track record of a man's experience. Faith is based on your knowledge of his person. If I tell you after service, there will be free bus transport to take you. Assuming you are a new person who just came here. It's up to you to look at me and gauge, could this person be lying? And then if you wish, you can ask somebody who has had an experience with me. The last time he spoke like this, was there a bus? And the person tells you yes. So you believe. Not because you have seen a bus. You believe because you think I am too big to lie to you. That's what faith is predicated upon so when god says i want to reveal my glory it's up to you to first believe could god be joking is he playing games with me does he have the ability to back up his claims and this is why we have the bible the bible is a compendium of god's speakings versus their manifestations in the life of people abraham i will make you at the end of it he made abraham he told Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. At the end of it, Gideon became a mighty man. He told the apostles, you will receive power at the end of it. The Bible says, then he swore by himself. 
that by these two immutable things it will be impossible for God to lie to the end that you may find a consolation that every time you see God speak you take him seriously say I believe in God say it again I believe in God hallelujah today I want you to open up your spirit because I believe with all my heart that what I'm about to share with you will truly bless you in the part two of this series we are going to be considering the anointing the glory revealed part two we are looking at the anointing that agency that can help men to reveal the possibilities in God I said to you how that the glory of a man listen please is an unveiling of the possibilities that are in that man but there is a spiritual agency that empowers men to reveal this possibility the name given to it is the anointing acts chapter 1 verse 8 hmm. please be very sensitive a lot will happen tonight a lot will happen tonight this series is meant to truly bring an anointing to your life that you can hold on to it you can run with it and you can take every mountain that stands before you say amen. amen acts chapter 1 verse 8 let's read together one to read but ye shall receive what hold on you shall receive the word power there is the word dunamis it's not the word exousia there are many words that are translated power and authority interchangeably two of them that are very important is exousia and dunamis Exousia is erroneously translated power in many places in scripture. But exousia is not power. Exousia is an authorization. The capacity to stand in the office of someone and represent him is called exousia. But this is not exousia. This talks of force. The agency that compels compliance is called power. Dunamis. So it says you shall receive power after read on that the holy ghost is what come upon you what will that power make you do read on it says and ye shall be unto me where in jerusalem uh-huh judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth so his idea is that you become witnesses who is a witness a witness is one who validates that the claim of another is true are we together if we are in the court for instance please pay attention i'm establishing a lot if we're in the court of law right and someone stole my phone and while he was stealing it promise saw the person are we together and now we're in the court of law and I say no this guy Sam stole my phone the judge will ask do you have any witness and then we will bring promise let's assume promise was snapping and in the process of snapping he snapped the man picking it that is the evidence a witness is only a witness because he has an evidence without an evidence you cannot be a witness please listen without an evidence you cannot be a witness I can be I mean Ejimi can be my brother but in this case he cannot be a witness he can support me in prayer but when we stand in court he does not have evidence everybody say evidence I'm building a case here so promise comes before the judge and then he says are you a witness to this he says yes produce your evidence then he produces a photo and that photo shows the person stealing and based on that evidence the judge so the evidence is the power that has forced the phone to return back to me the anointing is the proof that you are a witness the anointing is the evidence when you stand in this court of life and life places a demand on you to prove that God is with you. When your family background brings before you a mountain to prove whether God is with you. When the limitation in Nigeria stands before you 
and says you are a Christian, prove that God is with you. He says you must receive power. The authorization. You cannot be a witness. So you are going around telling people Jesus saves. And they are saying, what do you mean Jesus saves? Buddha also saves. So what is your evidence? And then the person levitates in the air. This is my evidence. Buddha empowered me. And they say, what is your evidence? And then you say, ba 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 ba. And they say, nonsense. That's not evidence. Hmm. Are we together? When someone comes up on the scene and says, I am a free mason. I worship the flying dragon of Asia. The spirit called Mammon. And this is the evidence. I have built empires by her wisdom. What is your evidence? And then you say, I'm a Christian. I'm just going to heaven. What is your evidence? Please pay attention to tonight's service. Because life will ask you that question. I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself. I'm not one of those religious people. I took time to ask God questions before I started ministry. Because the world will ask me questions. You will stand before businessmen who are idol worshippers. The spirit will give them ideas and they will move forward. And you come ranting and speaking like a fool. You will stand before arrows that fly by day. And noisome pestilences. What is your evidence? When there is a plague moving and it does not affect you, it's an evidence that there is another life in you. Please hear me. This is what I'm trying to teach you in this series. There must be an evidence. Let me tell you why we are talking too much in church. A believer was never designed to be a noise maker. We were designed to be proof producers. Our noise is a, is a cover up for insufficient evidence. Do you know you can be in a court and speak and the lawyer will say this evidence is not strong enough. There are few things the church is doing that unbelievers are not doing. Very few. Very few. I have studied a lot on world religions. I study a lot on religions and so many things. Christianity is not the fastest growing religion. I hope you are aware. I will tell you why. Because our strategy is wrong. They have proposed strategies that are not very effective. The religions that represent the fastest growing religions, you never see crusades. Are we together? You never see tracts. You never see people with talking, moving with Bibles all around. But there is a harvest per second, per second. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. He's working in me. God's ability. God's ability. He's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. your hands on your head in one minute and pray and say Lord there must be an evidence an evidence I'm tired of bringing mockery to your name and misrepresenting you go ahead and pray he shall receive power power not stories power not stories power Hallelujah, please sit down fire is burning in this place I tell you Acts chapter
chapter 10 verse 38 please help us media i came to challenge you the way we are doing church and christianity we are about to disappoint god we need evidences not evidences just from preachers are we together I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself. I'm not one of those people they like, they say, just believe, don't worry in his time. No way. No way. No way. Before Gideon accepted the assignment, he asked questions. Before Mary accepted, she, she said, how shall these things be? Because according to my knowledge, a man and a woman will produce pregnancy. But he said the power of the highest. In other words, there is another root in the spirit. You have known that it's only a man and a woman. You have known that you only wait for five years to get a job. But there is another root. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. See, I bring you another way. There is not only one way of doing things. The world has created their way. But God has his way. How God anointed Jesus. Let me tell you what that means. Look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus. Of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who was anointed this way? Jesus. He was not anointed three days to the cross. He would have had 33 years of wasted experience and three days of impact he was anointed before how many of us have been taught to start moving without empowerment he says as a result of that who went about doing what doing good an example of the good he did was to heal all that were oppressed of the devil that was not the only good he did. He multiplied bread, doing good by the anointing. He forced money inside the mouth of a fish, doing good by the anointing. He multiplied bread and fish by the anointing. He calmed the storm by the anointing. He vindicated a woman who was on her way to death by the anointing. He raised the dead by the anointing. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all that they, all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Divine presence bringing the anointing in the life of Jesus and Jesus moved around doing good. You are going around trying to do good. Willing to do good. Meaning to do good. But good is not coming because good is not just a desire. There is an empowerment Empowerment. Men are empowered to do good. I want to help the poor. There is an anointing that helps you to do good. Write this down. What is the anointing? Please participate and listen patiently and carefully. Those outside in any of the overflows, just pay attention. You may be standing, but listen. Number one. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon a man, upon any man, not a preacher. God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. Every military man has a uniform. The uniform is a seal of authorization. When the military man is in mufti, he has no right to do certain things. But when he wears his uniform, his uniform and his badge is his seal of authorization. Are we together? Mm. Paul said, Paul, I, Paul, a man approved of God with miracles, signs and diverse manifestations. Approved of God. That is the evidence of my apostleship. Hallelujah. So number one, God's seal of authorization upon a man to represent him. Number two, the anointing 
is God's capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Write it down. Underline compel. Because we live in a stubborn world that will not change by desire. It takes power to change things. It takes power to change genotype from SS to AA. It takes power to change a cancerous cell to a healthy cell. It takes power to raise the dead. It takes power to prosper. Hallelujah. Are we together? It takes power to prosper. We all want to prosper, but we neglect the place of power. Many people bow to gods, bow to spirits, receive power from them. They sacrifice children, turn them upside down and drain their blood. And the man takes his pen upon that blood and goes to sign a proposal. And whenever you see it, you must approve it. That's power. And yet many believers just move around and they ask you, why should you get this proposal? You say, I'm sincere. Welcome to the world where only mantles speak. Your long story and English will not do you much. When Moses went to Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, this is what the Lord said. Pharaoh said, nonsense. He said, my Lord, continue the conversation. I don't have time for this rubbish. Janus and Jembez brought their own rod. When he swallowed it, Moses said, take note of this, I'm coming back. And he left. After nine plagues, Pharaoh was still hardened. Then the Bible says, yet one more plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and the nation of Israel. He says, afterwards, he shall let you go. And he didn't let them go. The Bible says, they were driven to go out. They didn't wait for their dough to rise to make chinchi. They were in a hurry. They made it anyhow because a man was tired. May your anointing weary darkness to let you go. I'm not motivating you. There is an unction a man can carry. No matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. Give him two minutes. That madness will rearrange itself until it comes out. Because fire was not designed to fear. The Bible says he maketh his angels winds, no more spirits, and his ministers flames of fire. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please look up. Someone came to me and said, Every night. There's a spirit that comes to him and oppresses him. Just when things are about to happen, a stranger steps into his room. And I said, it's because that stranger has not seen power. The Bible says no man can enter a man's house and spoil him. What will you first do? Discuss? Suggest? Bind the strong man, he says. And then you spoil his goods. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen i prophesy to you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen sing it one more time everything that was lost shall be returned unto me Have you seen someone steal a laptop because he saw a room empty and you steal the laptop and run away with it? Are we together? Run away with the laptop because you are more powerful than the person. Then what does the owner do? He goes to the police station and carries a policeman. Are we together? They hold guns and they enter a van. Then they come and meet the owner after two weeks. And say we are going to kill you power above his power what does he do 
he shows you the laptop is still lying down there quietly and he carries it the bible said when you catch a thief if he gives you back what he has stolen he has still cheated you he will restore tenfold that profit must be added in the realm of the spirit when you catch a thief he doesn't pay back what he has stolen because time would have gone are we together if the breakthrough had come in 2005 by now you would have helped many people so now that it did not come i'm not just going to receive it like that if you receive it you did it was not restoration it was just progress continued The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. If Buhari announces right now and says tomorrow is public holiday, assuming tomorrow were a working day, immediately he speaks. All the armed forces and the military people and paramilitary, he is using authority, not power. What he is using is exousia his office as a president to speak but dunamis are the soldiers so they move on the street with cane guns tear gas and uh, black maria what are they doing compelling compliance if they find you roaming around still trying to sell drugs in your pharmacy they ask you did you not hear what the president said and then you, they hop you into the black maria and penalize you god makes the statement the earth is the Lord's. He's waiting for you to create that compliance. Are we together now? Mm. Number three, we're still defining the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing, write it down, is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. The empowerment, the capacity to manifest the possibilities in God. The anointing is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. It's not enough to chorus and say God is love. It's not enough to chorus and say God is mighty. Are we together now? Your life must produce the evidence. Number four, the last definition. What is the anointing? The anointing is the agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. The agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus. There are two things God is obsessed that they be revealed on the earth. Number one is his love. Number two is his sovereignty, his might as the sovereign ruler. That's where the word Lord comes from. There is a desire in God to see his love find expression in the earth. There is a desire in God to see his sovereignty find expression. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions to the anointing. Please just write this quickly. That's not really where we are dwelling. We've preached many messages on the anointing. But just for us to know. There are two dimensions of the anointing. Broadly speaking. Number one. There is the personal anointing that empowers a man to grow and be like Jesus. There is a personal anointing that empowers a man to grow spiritually and be like Jesus. People like Kenneth E. Hagin call it the anointing within. The personal anointing that is for your spiritual growth to, to help you grow to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ it is the anointing that teaches you all things it is the unction from the Holy One that empowers you right the grace of God has appeared unto all men teaching us to say no there is the personal anointing to grow and represent Christ first John 220 media please first John 220 that's the first dimension of the anointing Every believer in Christ is entitled to that dimension of the anointing. Even that dimension itself can grow. 
everyone is entitled read after me please one to read it says but ye have an unction from the holy one and as a result you know all things you have an unction whether you are a preacher whatever you, if you are in christ you are entitled to this dimension of the anointing hallelujah the second dimension of the anointing and trust me i know what i'm saying the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. The second dimension of the anointing is the anointing given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. That is the anointing of your call, the anointing of your destiny. The anointing of your destiny is not the same as the anointing of your personal spiritual growth. It's the anointing that backs you up to make sure you fulfill purpose. The anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. Write this down. It is the anointing that reveals your destiny. It is the anointing that empowers you to fulfill your assignment on earth. That one comes with discovering your call. That one comes with discovering your place in life and destiny. It doesn't come just because you are born again. Are we together? If God calls you into ministry, there is an anointing that follows you. If God calls you into business, there is an anointing that follows you. The moment you assume that position of being an ambassador, you are ready to take one of the seven mountains that control humans. One of the seven mountains, the mountains of religion, the mountains of government, the mountains of, of, of arts and entertainment, the mountain of media, the mountain of education, the mountain of family, and the mountain of finance. Any one of those mountains God sends you, there is an anointing. Are we together? Because there are rulers of darkness. The Bible tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he says, but against what? Principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are rankings and all these spirits are strategically stationed on this mountain listen to my message give me this mountain there i teach on the spiritual dimension of success success is not just by degrees success is not just by intelligence success is not just by being scientific there is a spirituality because there are giants on every mountain but Caleb said give me this mountain hallelujah so there is an anointing that comes with your call there is an anointing that comes with your assignment when God empowers you he puts an anointing upon your life an anointing upon the ministry he has committed to you are we together there is an anointing upon Benny Hinn that produces that result. Now, let me tell you something about this second dimension of the anointing. Listen. This second dimension of the anointing is not operational anytime. I want you to understand this. Are we together? There is a timing and there are seasons of its operation. This anointing for your assignment is not operational anytime. There are three laws that govern its operation. One, a demand from those who desire to be recipients of it. It responds to faith. It responds to desire. Are we together? The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, how that when he was passing the gates, beautiful, the man was begging for arms. And Peter told him, look on us. And he looked at them, expecting to receive. And he says, silver and gold. That expectation provoked the anointing. Blind Bartimaeus cried, Thou son of David, he provoked the anointing. That is the anointing people like Kenneth E. Hagen would call the anointing upon. It doesn't come all the time. Anybody that tells you it comes all the time is a liar and doesn't understand anything about the anointing. If it's operational in you all the time, it will kill you. You do not have the physical capacity. Your body does not have that stamina 
have you finished preaching and you went back and felt tired it lifted that's what jesus meant by virtue has gone out of me when virtue leaves you prophets in ancient times when the anointing landed upon them for their experience when it lifted some of them were sick for days they had to eat herbs to recover from the stream are we together this anointing is activated at the point of delivery at the point where you have to do that which you were born to do so you can be sleeping in your house the moment there is a demand and it is with respect to your assignment the anointing is like a lion within you are we together that's the reason why you can see a man of God you may not even be able to touch him when he's on stage after the meeting you are hugging him slapping him because something has lifted but if by any mistake you're hugging you apply faith to it it will return that's what makes people just they are laughing and the next in the power of God because their hunger did not die with the service are we together so many people were touching Jesus and a woman came he said if I may but touch the hem of his garment Jesus was not even aware but it was automatic the moment there was a demand that anointing that messianic anointing that will fulfill Isaiah 61 to bind up the brokenhearted the anointing that is given on account of your assignment two scriptures to help us Isaiah 61 please will not read it um, will not project it just write it Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4 the spirit of the Lord is upon me upon me because he gave me an assignment that requires an authorization so because of that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and with that spirit came an anointing to preach glad tidings to bind up the brokenhearted right to set the captives free to open up the doors of prison to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all day that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified the anointing came for that reason Jesus reiterated it again in Luke chapter 4 when you read from verse 14 to 18 the Bible says they brought to him right that which was written by Isaiah the prophet and then he opened it and he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me and at the end of it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled i have come as a fulfillment of this then he began to do it in one of the synoptic gospels there and then he told a man with a withered hand stretch forth your hand as a proof that i have come What is the purpose of the anointing? I've said it to us, but we must. The purpose is, is encapsulated in the definition. But the purpose of the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One, to read shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed why listen please look up there are yokes there are burdens there are afflictions upon the lives and the destinies of men upon the families of men robbing men of their dignity mocking God's statement that he made man like him and it takes the anointing to correct that error are we together the anointing comes to lift burdens the anointing comes to break yokes the anointing comes to open up prison doors to them that are bound. Number two, Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66 verse 3.
Let's read it, please. Just write it and look up and let's read. One, two, read. Say unto God. Uh huh. Read on. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar, not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power. Listen, let me tell you something. You are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here. Unfortunately, it is not given to you to choose to arrive here. Are we together? The moment you are born, there are children who from birth, they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses. Are we together? They never chose it. It's the reality. Listen, let me tell you. The moment you cross the second heavens, the domain of evil can find expression. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the Bible says. But from the second heavens, demonic activities are authorized to find expression. Down till under the earth. That's what happens to children. The moment, it's not a man and a woman that produces children. They just create the body for the child to come. But the moment that child arrives, right from the interface of the second heavens, war begins over the destiny of the child. It's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child. Or careless enough to allow anything happen. Are we together? Yeah. That is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb. How can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there? Are we together? Is it not in your Bible that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? How did he pray in tongues? How did he manifest that? Hallelujah. I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing. This, this is the place where I want us to be sensitive now. Because you are not only going to hear, you are going to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Please believe me. You are not going to hear alone. You are going to receive. Amen. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Holy Spirit. I wait on you for fire. Kaba kaba ya for fire. For fire. Lord, we wait on. You can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me 
I was not born with it. Are we together? A time can come. And tonight can be that time. If you believe. But if you are careless. Elijah said, if you can see me, was he blind? It's a spiritual language. There is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing. It's not about falling down. Look at me. It's not about falling down. It's about your spirit. Station. You are not just hearing. You are seeing what the Lord is saying. Let me tell you something. The difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing. There is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing. I know it. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your throne. Just follow me, follow me. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your own. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you were mighty on your own. Yeah, yeah. Mighty in this place, yeah. Abba Shaba Kataya, you're mighty in this place. Shalom, shalom, my father, shalom. Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, Baba Shakatabayada. Shalom, you're welcome in this place. sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction Jesus himself. What can make a man of God so powerful that your words can create an effect in the life of men? You are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf. What is the key? Please hear me. This is an office. I'm not speaking to you as a man. I can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth. But I speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing. I may not show you. I may not boast that I know business principles. I may not boast that I know on leadership. But I can teach you the mysteries of the presence of God. For it is an office. It was given to me by Jesus Christ. The angels bow before him. You're beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. The heavens are not the door. 
The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Just follow me tonight. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Heavens and earth are going The angels bow before you You're beautiful You're beautiful Oh understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will walk in a new dimension believe me understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ministry will change like day and night understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will become like a God upon the earth understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your life will become a wonder it's not by quoting scripture it's a realm you can stand in number one the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation don't trivialize it write it and take it as serious as anything there are many people in church who are not born again but they want power there are many pastors on the altar who are not born again but they want power you can fast as an unbeliever you will never find power you can be the PA of a man of God and not be born again please hear me that they ordain you does not mean you are born again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah, I tell you, I sense fire in this place. That you were ordained, they poured oil on you, does not mean that you are born again. Let me tell you, we can do what we know to do on earth, but it depends on whether God approves of it or not. Ah, 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 ah. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to God is not salvation let me tell you the truth there are so many people who need to examine they are born again I am telling you this there are many people who are not born again 
are we together and I don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with Jesus Christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type God will back God does not back everybody just because Jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen you know it's and, and please if you're a pastor here hear me aside from the impartation you receive tonight open your eyes don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic Oh, the power of God is here all these things we keep doing we fool ourselves nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter not suit not English not Greek and Hebrew there must be a track record in the secret place he said that which I tell you in the secret declare thou on the mountaintop you don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic you expect things to happen no sir human beings are not robots are we together human beings are not idiots do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat? I don't mean physically alone. Track record. Salvation. Number two. The second key. Give us 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. The second key. Pay attention. To a rich, heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for God and his kingdom addiction passion I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required you search much deeper within to the way things are You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus There is no power for part-time Christianity there is no power for part-time addiction there is no power for part-time ministry so many pastors are part-time ministers by part-time I don't mean that you are doing another thing part-time with God and part-time with ambition looking for relevance joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry no it is God that lifts men please hear me your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven, it must match your level of addiction. You will never have more power beyond your addiction. No. Your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you to his kingdom? To seeing his kingdom come? Don't say I'm addicted. It shows in your giving. It shows in your time. It shows in your service in the house of God. Don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house. You are not addicted. No. It says as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. It was the psalmist that said this. It says... Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? To see your power and your glory. 
let me tell you something many Christians in our generation we love God we are born again but we are too ashamed of our addiction addiction the same way have you seen someone addicted to uh, what they call this thing Indian hemp the person will not mind coming to meet a small child and say sir please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten he's lying so obviously but because he cannot help it if you can still manage your passion for God you don't love him enough Oh, let's let's be real let's let's not act like fools you are joking you want power I'm telling you you must fall in love with God with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us are I you know I pray for people and most times when people come that I pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever I know they don't love God they even love me more than God I see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man. You know that they love me more than God. You know they love that anointing more than God. Anything above God, even if he gave you, is an idol. Whatever it is, please hear me. Do you love God more than your beauty? Do you love God more than power? Do you love God more than koinonia? Do you love God more than Joshua Selman? That's addiction. Do you love God more than marriage? Do you love God more than, more than whatever it is? All these carnal things that take our time. Please fall in love with God in a way that nothing in time. People get jobs. When they lose jobs, they backslide. What a shame to your passion for God. You are in a relationship. Someone says, I will marry you. All of a sudden, he says, I'm not doing. And you leave God. God, I'm angry. Jesus told the disciples, he said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? Where, where are we going? Leaving you is no longer an option. If you never bless me, I still, I mean, I still owe you my love forever. Please, let me tell you something. If you want power from God, stop seeking God just because of things. Stop seeking God just because of things. Oh Lord, I want your time. I want your hand and we bend God's hand with fasting and prayer no how many pastors want to see God glorified in their assemblies very little I can tell you this many pastors fast some of you are like that probably you came from somewhere you are sitting boiling waiting for the time of impartation and God is saying calm down not so so that you will not go back disappointed God is not a herbalist there is a protocol to true spiritual power. Addiction. Addiction. Outspoken Christianity. Outspoken Christianity. Not the type you off your ringtone because you are in a place that, 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 that will fall your hand. If God falls your hand, you are fallen. I tell you. I'd rather be a doorkeeper, the psalmist said. I will trade my palace and its honor to serve God. Forever you will be. Forever you will be. The lamb upon the throne. The lamb upon the throne. And I gladly bow my M.O.G. It's time to seek God more than ministry. Your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God. You have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons. And you, you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule. I can cancel any ministration for my secret place. You know, we think being busy is ministry. Oh, today I'm in Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm in Dubai. Next tomorrow I'm in South Africa. Next tomorrow I'm in UK. Then I'm in Aquaibon. I'm in London. And we think because we are hopping up and down, we are doing ministry. Let me tell you, you may be doing all these things, but before God, you are not doing anything. Your heart is more important than your voice to God. 
don't think because you are always talking it means God is hearing you no your heart number three let's hurry up I want us to pray what is the third key the baptism of the Holy Ghost the third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the Holy Ghost slash prayers so you write it slash prayers that the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 the baptism of the Holy Spirit backed up by the ability to pray in tongues fluent tongues now there's no time for me to go into this discussion please don't stop Mike don't stop you see this concept of prayer and the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been hijacked by Satan please listen to me it is not a denominational perspective it has nothing to do with Pentecostalism and charismatism I was never filled with the Holy Ghost in any church there is no pastor no denomination that can claim that it was because I was in the assembly no God did that for me specifically so that I will be able to communicate these truths to people the devil has cheated us and I know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism I understand and I respect your passion but listen to me if you want power in this kingdom that endowment with power that endowment with power ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says now when the day of Pentecost were fully come he said they were gathered together in one accord verse 2 says suddenly suddenly not gradually the baptism does not happen gradually suddenly are we together suddenly they had a sound that sound as of a mighty rushing wind and the Bible says it came and filled the room and then the Bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it rested on each each one of them not some they're not as shared each one of them then the Bible says then they began to speak with tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance they were 120 in the upper room it was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing and they said these men were drunk with new wine they linked that experience with wine the same way a man drinks beer one bottle two bottles ten bottles at the eleventh one is not himself again another influence takes him so when they saw the men, he said, you are behaving like those who have taken this thing. Are we together now? And then in Acts chapter 3, still, well, Acts chapter 2, when Peter finished preaching to them, the Bible says they were caught to the heart. And this is what they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then he says, repent for the remission of your sins. And then he says, you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the Lord will call that included us are we together yeah in Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Paul having passed through the upper coast the Bible says he came and he found certain disciples disciples they were already born again give us Acts please 19 1 to 4 they had passed through the upper coast the Bible says Paul came and found certain disciples are we together and then he asked them a question verse 2 he says have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe meaning it's not the same experience has been born again initiated by the same spirit but there are two separate experiences have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed 
and then they replied him they said we have not even heard if there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised and then he says unto what then were you baptized he was asking them a question and they said the baptism of john then paul began to explain to them he said the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who was to come that means it was jesus christ and afterwards paul said the, the bible says they were now baptized to the name of jesus christ and then paul laid his hands upon them and then the holy spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues right they were 12 in number have you received the holy ghost have you received that empowerment since you believed when you read let's read from 18 18 the last five verses if you can give it to us right the bible talks about a very intelligent man hallelujah um no not 19 verse 18 18 acts 18 acts 18 please the last four verses acts 18 Media, are you with us acts 18 okay let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time okay now the bible says give us from verse 24 let's start from 24 listen to this story a certain jew named who apollos and the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. It's where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance like many people in churches like many pastors they are zealous they love god but the scope of the understanding of god is the baptism of john let's see what happened one day he went to a crusade to impress everybody as usual he says and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue they were men who were powerful people of the spirit called Aquila and Priscilla they said when they had him and they they took him with them they said we see zeal in you but you are limited there is a theology that has not been taught to you we want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God the Bible says they took him hear me and then they says they expounded to him the way of God more what perfectly let's see what he did as a result next verse and when he was disposed and passed to Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. The Bible says, who when he was come, he helped them much which believed through grace. Let's see what he did. Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Now he had an evidence. He didn't just speak to them. In the former verses, he was eloquent. Sorry. But now he could convince them that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ this was not just just again there was an evidence there was an empowerment listen you must be tired of explanations oh God is this God is that one miracle can answer a thousand questions there is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again. The internet is full of messages. There are all kinds of men of God with perspectives. All across Africa, all across the world, messages are now free. What the world needs is a demonstration of power. Romans chapter 8, please. Verse 19. Shabbat 
Romans chapter 8. For the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation, not the explanation, not the discussion. Let's see it in the New Living Translation or the Message Bible. I'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are. There is a version like that. 8 verse 19. Not 20. 8 verse 19. 8 verse 19. Uh, thank you. NLT. For creation is what? Eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Because the Bible says it does not yet appear. They are still looking at us and they think we are like them. But there is an activity happening in us. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Are we together? The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. We are still in the formation. There is still a building. Christ is still being formed in us. Like Paul prayed to the church, he said, My little children of whom I travel until Christ be formed. For when he's done, let me tell you, he will produce a wonder in our lives. First Corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray. First Corinthians 2 verse 7. He says, talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit. He said, no, please give it to us. Um, okay no problem no problem let's just stick it here it says no the wisdom we speak it doesn't make sense but the bible calls it the hidden wisdom god put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it if you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom the bible says we speak the wisdom we speak of is what the mystery everybody say mystery the same way there is a traditional festival and you see people going around fire and making enchantments and putting fire on their body have you seen that happen and it doesn't burn them they put the fire in their mouth and bring it out they carry knife and put it in their mouth and it enters and brings it out because they are operating on a mystery the bible says to the believer there is a mystery that has been given you It says the mystery of God, his plan that was he previously hidden. What was it? He said, even though he made it for our ultimate glory. So one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues. When a man locks up himself and begins to pray, Kabaka Tata Barata. People say you are just talking nonsense, no problem. It's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter. <laughs> and nobody laughs at you. It's intelligent. In fact, people accuse you for not laughing. Who taught you how to laugh? The same way your cry, as sarcastic as it looks, it compels compassion. Tongues is also like that. Don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues. When you slap a baby, Shade, when you gave birth to your child and they slapped the child and the child started crying, who taught the child that they cry with the mouth, not the eyes? It was programmed there. Listen, I want you to know that the believer is supernatural. When you remove the supernatural, we are just herbalists. Leaders or, and followers of a religion don't remove the supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Made for our glory. Any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of God. There is a relationship between prayer and power. Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4, they receive tongues. Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues. He said you receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. Meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man. It was Paul himself that said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. 
hallelujah Luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first Thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing it doesn't mean pray from morning till night you'll be an irresponsible person it means pray consistently the Bible says, and the fire upon the altar, it shall never go down day or night. Let me tell you something. Whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life. It's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life. It's cheaper, as bad as it is, for your health to be attacked than your prayer life. And let me tell you how Satan attacks you. He makes you to resent everybody that can help you. You fight and quarrel them and push them when you are alone then he attacks you Satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness through anger through fault finding so everybody that can help you and intercede for you he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you listen listen excessive solitude I'm not talking of just retreating to pray when there is a desire in you to not hear people to not listen you are in a world of your own it's a sign that darkness is close to you it's a strategy for your destruction the last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation the mystery of impartation transference of grace transference of unction transference of power numbers chapter 27 we'll just look at one example so that we pray let's see what transpired between Moses and Joshua a classic sign of biblical impartation numbers 27 verse 18 to 23 numbers chapter 27 Please write this scripture down and study it with all your heart. This was God instructing Moses to prepare Joshua for ministry. Are we together? Are you ready? Let's read. One to read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and do what? Lay your hands upon him. That what should happen. Next verse. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. Are we together? And he says, And thou shalt put some of thine honor. Can you show me where honor is in a man? God said, Don't just through impartation transfer your spirit, transfer your honor. I told you honor is not something you fight for it's a mantle that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient there is a mantle that makes men loyal to a grace it's not by shouting and saying obey me there is a mantle and he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall speak counsel for him and so on and so forth and so on and so forth now let's see what happened Deuteronomy chapter 3 chapter 34 verse 9 just one scripture Deuteronomy 34 is still a continuation of this story Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 let's read together one two read uh-huh was full of the spirit of wisdom why for Moses had what laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him listen you know why people don't listen to you because you are trying to do ministry using seniority you are trying to do ministry saying don't disrespect me there is an unction that compels loyalty men are not loyal to a man just because he can preach they will clap for you when you see a ministry that can follow a man unto death brothers and sisters there is a mystery upon his head i can tell you koinonia has that mystery hmm.
You see, Ba, there are secrets in this kingdom. There are secrets in this kingdom. The one you can find is the one you will live by. The one you do not know is the one that will chain you forever. God said, I want to honor Joshua, but I will not ignore a vessel who is already carrying it. He said, Moses, it is within your power to put your spirit and your honor upon him. Listen, you can carry a man's grace and the virtue of God upon his life. and reap. You can trace an anointing and know where it came from. Are we together? You can see a man stand on stage and know that this came from Benny Hinn. This one. You can see this prayer fire and know this one came from Duncan Williams. This one did not just come from this. You can see a prosperity mantle and trace it. Anointings are like address. They can show you where they came from. I'm a product of many anointings. The glory revealed through the anointing. The anointing giving you capacity to produce an evidence. An evidence. An evidence. There are different kinds of anointings. There is the power to prosper. Shout it. Say the power to prosper. I want you to shout it like you mean it. Say the power to prosper. This is what many people need to pray for. I'm not against business ideas. I teach you principles. There's financial dominion. But I can tell you there is such a thing as the power to prosper. If you don't have it, I've seen people who have all kinds of business ideas. But the power to prosper is not a business idea. The power to prosper is a grace that compels creation to respond to you in a certain way. Jesus had it. He said, go and you will see a donkey, a colt. No man had written on it. Bring it. The owner could not say no. What kind of grace is that? That's the grace that will make you tell somebody, we need speakers for our program. And he said, take it. That's the grace that will make somebody say, take my car and be using it for this crusade. There is such a grace. Let me tell you something. How you will know the power to prosper is not in your life is that you pay for everything. If you pay for everything, the power to prosper is not. It's not about being a millionaire. The power to prosper is not about being a millionaire. It's about the supernatural speaking in your life. Men are rising to help you when there is trouble. Listen, if you are in trouble and there is no man who can arise to help you, I'm telling you, the power to prosper is not the power for finances. We have reduced it to money. Every time preachers preach, they, they mean the power to give you dollars. Please, don't insult God. Money was an idea. By the time that scripture was written, there was no naira, there was no dollar. It's the power that moves you forward. Even if it must raise help us from anywhere. I want you to believe this. By the grace of God, this is how this ministry came. The power to prosper. Listen, please, I don't know how, I don't want you to think money. Money is part of it. If you think money, you will, be, you will think I am saying the power to get money, to buy watch and suit. That's nonsense. That's not what I'm talking about. To prosper means to do well. To prosper means by all means you will excel. Are we together? The, pros the power to prosper is the power that moves men to support your interest at the expense of their own interest. When you see a man, a man who can leave his own assignment and pursue another man's assignment, there is power to prosper there. That's what God wanted to give us. But pastors have told us the power to prosper is the power to buy a nice shoe. And you sit down and pray for hours. You don't need to be born again to buy a nice shoe. You just need to offer value and it will come. This is, this is not about getting money for shoe. The power that causes men to move you forward. You can have money but do you have helpers? 
you can have money but do you have endorsers you can have money but do you have men that can lift your hand this is the power to prosper say i need the power to prosper the key to suffering in a christian's life is to ignore the power to prosper believe me you may get a job very soon you'll find out that money does not do everything money is not everything money is very important don't get me wrong but money is not everything there are people today who are in houses that they are not paying the rent that's the power to prosper you can have 500,000 to rent a duplex you can have 2.5 million to rent a duplex that's not necessarily the power to prosper that's good financial acumen good financial intelligence and that's commendable but the power to prosper is that you can leave your house with nothing and return back with miracles because there are men stationed anywhere whether you forget your money or not it doesn't make any difference because there is an unction that sends helpers as at when due that's the power to prosper and if our God is for us then who can never stop us and if our God is with us then what can stop us help me Of the power to prosper is the ministry of men in your life the ministry of men in your life help us everywhere please listen it's not just intelligence to produce result by yourself this body is limited there is too much you can do there is only so much you can do with this body are we together yes see let me tell you something if the only job of the power to prosper is to give you money then Bill Gates can mock the church are we together you know we think all there is to the power to prosper is money I don't insult any man of God we have preached this thing but I'm saying we have limited the power to prosper to money so those who don't like money just say no 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 I don't like it to reject the power to prosper is like to cut two of your legs in the spirit how else will you move are we together the bible says david was in the cave of adulam by himself all of a sudden 400 men that's the power to prosper they came to him in the cave and they said be a leader of the, over us we will hear you and we will walk with you in ancient times you were not rich if you just had money they can come and beat you and kill you and remove your head and carry the gold you were rich if you had people people it was a battle of territory and loyalty but in our generation now you can be a, a greedy person that just looted from the national treasury and carry money and buy suit and come and deceive us we know what the power to prosper is there are people who are rich but they do not have it that's why they don't give god the glory when you suffer for everything you can't give god the glory are we together you suffer to get a job you suffer to keep it you suffer to buy a car you suffer to change another one you suffer to get your wife pregnant suffering all around how can you give god the glory but when you sit down and watch god god will say son i want to embarrass you stand still you have done something that has touched me stand still hallelujah one time we're coming back from Ekiti. And when we're coming back from Ekiti, I don't share too much of these testimonies. But someone just did a heavy transfer into the ministry's account. Honestly, I don't even know the person. I had to ask the protocol people, do you know this person? Help us everywhere. Not just cash. Not just kind someone will come and meet you and say there is a property somewhere i could not sleep the lord said i should bless you power to prosper someone says from today until december i will fuel the generator of koinonia don't even tell apostle that's the power to prosper they make your journey easy by making you lighter you can have the money but you won't sleep because of it 
let me tell you one of the graces I trust God to release tonight is the power to prosper I'm explaining it to you so that you will believe if it's not in your life you are going to cry this night because some of us it, once you are stranded you are dead there no helper you call and everybody ends your call it's not about hustling it's about Ebenezer the helper of Zion are we together if you don't believe what I'm teaching you I don't know how else to explain it to you are we together there are so many people in Koinonia here preparing for marriage the economy of Nigeria has become so fierce if you don't have the power to prosper you will suffer you can get a job after laboring for years in the university you get a job and someone just says where are you from and you say I'm Yoruba he says you are not Hausa leave the job it just brings in sentiment to cancel your five six seven years of labor that's the world we live in now are we together are you my brother are you a Christian or otherwise are you this are you from the same village not what do you have to give in that world of wickedness you want to move forward you want to plant a church I was not born in Zaria I'm not from Kaduna state you don't go to another man's state and do ministry if you don't have the power to prosper there is loyalty that comes with territory are we together that's why Jesus told the people start from Jerusalem but when you go to a foreign territory brothers and sisters you need the power to prosper that's what our fathers have used and they have opened branches of their ministries in UK in France huh? someone speaks Yoruba and another person interprets in French and the people never leave there is a pastor writing things in France and people would rather stay there and redeem MFM is there moving as if the devil does not exist you will find places where I was I was dedicating a woman's child um, she used to be in Zaria but now she's in France she was in Holland God used us you know and then it was a miracle for her after many years she had a child and she went to different churches the Presbyterian churches there were not dedicating children they didn't collect tithes and they were not dedicating children because the government was sanctioning and I told her I said uh -uh, you mean there's no church around and she said the only living church in this area is redeemed I said redeemed again redeemed again how did you get there now and the pastor there is a Yoruba person come on now power to prosper you enter a land and become indomitable a firm grasp of territories not intimidated by any government they will come and go the mystery keeps you there now they are downsizing workers between now and December a lot will happen I've told us I told us at 1st of January this thing will not go well in terms of the economy I'm not a prophet of doom but I told us there is a mystery of exemption that's why God said this are year of multiplied grace and influence Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3 it says Gentiles shall come hallelujah if you are looking for a better Nigeria this year I tell you the truth under God you are joking I love Nigeria are we together I'm a very loyal citizen of this nation but this is prophecy it's an unfolding of events some things will happen the only thing is that there is an exemption the power to prosper please you, you we, when it's time to pray you will cry it in your life that's what makes you different from unbelievers are we together that's the only condition where you can look at your life and give God glory you say no I know the school fees of my children before I will go to pay it someone has paid it and he will never tell you who he is write it again if you did not write it the ultimate proof that the anointing to prosper is upon your life is the ministry of men the ministry of helpers not just business ideas 
it takes men to make things happen have you not seen people with ideas and they died with their ideas someone called pastor Tunde Bakare and told him he said I love you and I've invested 200 million in an investment for you it's just growing whenever you need it they can talk to you and he said what for he said I'm okay and the man said no I had to do it you are my pastor Hi. when a man argues with you about blessing you there is such a thing and we are going to pray there are many other anointings the power listen the power to heal the sick there are three I'm going to teach us ah, there's no time let me just go straight to the three that the Lord told me that's number one the power to prosper number two are you ready it's called resurrection power don't claim you know what it is just listen to me resurrection power is about the apex the zenith of a man's manifestation of the anointing what is resurrection the ability to make dead things come back to life is the hallmark of creation are we together let me tell you something there is resurrection power the bible says Ephesians please help us Ephesians 1 verse 17 we are reading down to 20 for this call Paul says for this cause I Paul I bow my knees right to the father of glory that he may give unto you listen the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light he said that he may what know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints here it comes verse 19 read it if you're a christian one to go and what is the exceeding greatness of his what power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power what mighty power next verse which he wrought in christ when he what raised him the power that can raise a thing that has died is power indeed the power that can heal what is alive is power but the power that can raise what is dead come on you carry that anointing and enter a lifeless environment and something gives life Isaiah 32 verse 15 we are praying this one scripture and then we we'll stand up and pray let me show you that there is an ability that can bring life to dead things it is called resurrection power brothers and sisters get this anointing and your life will change no matter what it is it's a matter of time and influence upon you read it 32 want to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then what happens and the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine uh -huh. and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's the power of resurrection you step into a desert place spirit have your way in us today spirit take your turn as we are changed restores Ezekiel chapter 37 there is an anointing that can restore I tell you I feel the anointing of the spirit Ezekiel 37 
the hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me in the spirit listen and set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of what? bones no structure this power of restoration together with the power of resurrection and the power to prosper will make you indomitable believe me verse 2 verse 2 and cause me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many bones and they were what? very dry listen you will step into the life of people with age long issues the devil has stolen from them it's not just that the situation is dead it was stolen then son of man verse 3 he says can these bones live and he says only thou knowest verse 4 this is one key to releasing the anointing and he said unto me prophesy speak Hagar speak command Hagar instruct compel let it be upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones who speaks to bones who speaks to bones dogs eat bones men throw bones God speaks to bones he says hear ye the word of the Lord and then let's read verse 5 and behold I will cause bread to enter you go to verse 7 so I prophesied not as I wanted as I was commanded and there was what? a noise the same noise in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 there was a sound and behold a shaking and the Bible says and behold bones came together this is not just resurrection this is restoration are we together we are going to pray hold hands together in the next 5 minutes I'd like you to blast in tongues like an angry man who is tapping into power lift your voice and pray Shapaka prakata la ba 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 prakata kata la ba 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 pray like a man like a woman who is about to take delivery of unction to function praise rekete pokotso
Alléluia. Alléluia. I like you to look in one minute at your life. See the barriers that have stood before you. Because they are about to be smashed into pieces. Something is about to come upon your life. That will move you forward. Something is about to come upon your life that will drive you to the next level something is about to come upon your life the power to run the power to run the power to run the power to fly power to run please lift your hands Listen, it is not about falling down. Don't be distracted with falling down. Open your spirit and receive something that will change your life. Don't just focus on falling down. The Holy Ghost is doing his thing. But beyond falling down, open up your heart to receive. Children, adults, don't say no. Some people cannot receive. You have a child, stand for them. Don't say they cannot receive. Hallelujah. Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. The glory of God is revealed in a man when there is an anointing. Right now in the name that is above all names. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic office. And I declare that at the count of three. By the ministry of angels. By the unction. By the ministry of and the mystery that surrounds this office right now at the count of three I declare that this unction fall inside and outside online and everywhere one, two three, take it take it take it right now receive it power receive it Fire Shaka Baba Katana Baba inside the overflows right now, right now, right now. Every row, every row, every column, every row. The thousands following online. I release it upon you. You that are listening in your home, you that are listening in your room. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost in your life, in your ministry, in your business. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power. Take it now. Lift your hand. There is an anointing called the power to prosper. Lift your hands and receive it. I pray for you now. Shaka Paratai. I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in this ministry. 
the ministry of man making your life easy right now in the name of Jesus receive the power to prosper take the power to prosper take the power to prosper in your ministry take the power to prosper in your job the power to prosper in your academics the power to prosper in your business the power to prosper by this anointing every struggle in your life where you labor by yourself for result it comes to an end this night it comes to an end this night number two the power that can quicken things if that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will revitalize ay, 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 ay. will revitalize hallelujah the Lord is giving me a sign for many of you to be your right hand I don't know what I'm saying but your right hand in a supernatural way your right hand I see the right hand of many people shaking this is what the Lord is showing me right now that anointing for resurrection all over this auditorium take it now take it now take it now take it now every dead thing come alive come alive talita kumi come alive talita kumi dead academics dead relationships says and I will restore to you the years that the canker worm if you have not lost anything in your life you don't need to pray this prayer if you have not lost anything don't lift your hands don't worry but if you are among those who need true restoration 
you have wasted years time has passed opportunities pass and you need a rapid response listen the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there is a man who can call forth restoration there is an unction that will restore to you lift your hands not only will God restore he will give you grace to be an agent of restoration therefore right now I pray that unction for restoration according to Ezekiel 37 that sound that wind right now may that sound come upon your life take it now take it now take it now take it now go and restore your family take it now go and restore the fortunes that has been lost take it now go back experience academic restoration now now academic restoration jack back to 2-1 jack back to first class jack back to 2-1 Jack back to first class. Go back and get a job. Whatever made you lose your job, a new job comes by this anointing. Take it now. Where you would have been promoted, but sentiments kept you. Not only will you be promoted, it must be backdated. In the name of Jesus. Listen. You will hear strange testimonies from today's service. You will hear men who will come and tell you promotion of 10 years was compressed together and brought. There is an anointing for it. There are some of you, you would have been richer than the way you are now. You would have been better than the way you are now. But witchcraft kept you. I prophesy to you. I'm not asking you to move forward. I'm asking you to move to where you would have been. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you were supposed to have been married. And the devil delayed it. And now you are marrying. Carry twins. Carry twins. Carry twins. Carry triplets. Carry twins. Carry triplets. says I should tell you he's opening you up to a season of wisdom 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 he's opening you up to strange wisdom wisdom that's what you are receiving wisdom strong wisdom he's opening you up to a season of wisdom that's what you need for the next level of your life wisdom tremendous wisdom the wisdom of the spirit the wisdom of the spirit the wisdom of the spirit He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. Lord, I pray that you activate fountains of wisdom in him. Strange order of wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wisdom in your decisions. Dimensions of wisdom that you have never seen before. You will make decisions that will accelerate your life. Accelerate ministry. hallelujah in one minute mention everything you came with as a challenge and say lord the time has come for your grace and your power Shut
Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom, my Father, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, shalom. Shalom, shalom, Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. One more time. Shalom, yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. We are starting tonight with individuals that God is giving them breakthroughs. Every single one of those individuals will come under the anointing of the Spirit. At the count of three. Just those individuals. One, two, three. Now, now, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. That breaker anointing. I release it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. All the ones separated for breakthroughs right now. Inside and outside. I release that breakthrough anointing. That breakthrough anointing. Right now, that breakthrough anointing. Right now, shake it, take it, take it, take it. It comes like a mighty rushing wind. The breakthrough anointing, the breakthrough unction. Enough of that level. Enough of that dimension. I speak it. I declare it. I prophesy it, and I release it. Take it. From your belly, out of your belly, let it gush like living waters. Out of your belly, that breaker anointing. In the name of Jesus. Out of your belly. That breaker anointing. Breakthroughs. 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 I end the struggle. I end the struggle. I end the struggle by the breakthrough anointing. I end the struggle right now. I end the struggle right now. All over the building. I end the struggle right now. Shaka ba 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 ba. Shaka ta ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone lay your hands on your stomach. Just lay your hands on your stomach. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your stomach. He said, for out of your belly, something will happen to some people right now. Out of your belly. Just keep your hands there. Father, in the name of Jesus, where are the ones you are separating? Spiritual breakthroughs. Right now. Right now. At right now, from your belly. From your belly. From your belly. 
from your belly in the name of Jesus out of your belly let it flow let it flow living waters living waters living waters new dimensions living waters skatata kapata rekete tekete bekata taboskata embrata kata shekete lekes from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being a bursting thought of new wine a bursting thought of new wine a bursting thought of new wine a bursting thought hallelujah 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 sabarada balada bakadia there are people here right now listen you came here because you are confused there is no direction you are trusting god for direction you have prayed but there is nothing to do you need direction desperately lift your hands lord i pray wherever they are right now by the light of the spirit my father locates them receive direction right now receive direction right now marital direction academic direction receive direction receive direction i put it in your spirit by the light of god i put it in your spirit by the light of god i put it in your spirit by the light of god by the light of god by the illumination of the spirit direction you will hear that voice you will hear that voice you will hear that voice saying this is the way you will hear that voice saying this is the strategy you will hear that voice hallelujah hallelujah lift your hands the lord wants to destroy marital delay this is what is happening right now marital just keep your hands just do what i'm telling you to do hallelujah now hear me there are people here who god wants to release them into their marital destiny but there are horns and powers that has kept them down you may think it's finances or you may think it's this and that but the enemy has done this lift your hands father in the name of jesus i release you right now i release you i release your family i release your sisters that power that has held your marital destiny hear the voice of the lord that power that has stopped marriage in your family i speak in the name of jesus be loose right now 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 hallelujah now lift your hands i'm seeing in the spirit a tree without fruit and so i know the lord wants me to destroy barrenness 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 there is someone who came here with that situation i don't know if it's a couple or somebody you are expecting a miracle desperately let me have that one person come out i'm going to pray for everybody right now but we need to break that yoke right now 
we need to break that yoke right now there are families tied down there are families tied down when you identify that person the person can come out lift your hands let me pray no the Lord wants the family to come out first come out first celebrate Jesus hallelujah where are you coming from sir Kaduna Kaduna yes, sir. where's your wife she left my house October 26 without the courier and she packed her things and she left we were married for eight years no child you've been married for eight years no child. with no child and so because of the frustration she left do you know where she is She's in Kaduna in her mother's house. Why did she leave? Look at how the devil steps in to destroy families. Eight years and is living because there is no child. But are you still in touch? Well, the church tried to call her. She didn't answer. So I left her alone. I was just praying that God should just intervene. So a friend of mine invited me from Kaduna to come to this program. Where is the friend? Friend, come. I need to pray for you. May God bless you. Let's celebrate the friend. Hallelujah. These are the kind of useful and relevant friends that God should bring in your life. Friend, where are you? May God bless you. You are a good friend for inviting him to come and receive breakthrough. do you believe your wife will come back yes sir you want her back yes sir. I'm going to pray for you your wife will return back Amen. forget about what has happened God will give you two boys two girls Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, sir. You are a good man and you love God. Not only that, what do you do? I work in an electronics company, Samsung. So when we add this issue of this marriage, they have to let go of me. But I have my own personal business in Kaduna, which I, know. I God established. Is helping you. Yes, this marriage has destroyed too many things in your life. You've lost money. You've lost a lot of people. Even cars. Lost. Because I'm seeing somebody that really used to be blessed. What is like things are going down. The Lord is going to restore you. Amen. You believe that? You believe that? Yes, sir. Therefore, what God has joined, the Bible says, let no man put asunder. You need to be delivered. Right? There is a spirit that is making these things happen. You are a good man. You will be delivered right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shabaka I release your destiny right now. In the name of Jesus. I call forth your wife into your life. And I open the fountains of fruitfulness. The Lord showed me two boys, two girls. And I release them to your life. This power that has tied you down and tied your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that it is released right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm holding your hands. And with these hands, may your business jack up beyond that which you have ever known. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will restore your fortune. And he will bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Friend, come. Where are you from? Kaduna too? Zaria. Yeah. Zaria, yeah. You came alone? Yes. No, I came with a friend. What would you want the Lord to do in your life? Marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough? Yes. What does that mean? Marriage or health yes. in your marriage? Marriage. Marriage. When? This year. You believe it? Yes. Or you're just saying it? You have already spoken the word and it's happening. Let me pray for you. Father, 
you anointed us to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to appoint unto them and in the name of Jesus I declare that before this year runs out your husband comes to you and may you be happily married you will marry a godly man may you marry a blessed man one who will love you and fear the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen God bless you sir now lift your hands and let me pray I'm praying for barrenness I don't care what represents barrenness in any area of your life lift your hands barrenness can mean unfruitfulness in any aspect he says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army but he was leprous it was an area of barrenness barrenness is that aspect of your life that is not productive in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you right now lift your hands father there are people who like a vine have refused to bear fruit in different areas others want to bear fruit but the enemy has stopped it I pray for you right now every power that is sitting on your fruitfulness Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, Where are those people who barrenness have held their lives? Where are those people? In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon you now. Let fire come upon you now. I destroy the hold of barrenness everywhere in this building. I break the chains of barrenness. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, can you lift your hands? Just this row. Just this row. Just keep your hands lifted. I see a wind blowing through this row. Barrenness be destroyed from the back to the front back to the front back to the front there is no hiding back to the front there are many people in this room i break it right now i break it right now right now to the back from the back to the front 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 in the name of jesus christ anyone under any influence of unfruitfulness shake it right to the back in the name of Jesus be set free hallelujah now lift your hands I want to minister deliverance to the oppressed this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils when the spiritual limitation is taken away then your life will move forward what will happen tonight is not just for you but for every family you represent so there are people who will come under the influence of the anointing to be delivered not just for themselves but for their families and the families you represent lift your hands father in the name that is above all names i'm praying there are spirits sitting on families and the destinies of people appearing to people in dreams and visions and corrupting your purposes for their lives and lord it's time for them to go because this is mount zion now therefore i speak to every foul spirit every devil of darkness every yoke every territorial power that sits across territories I speak in the name of Jesus by the authority of the Lord Jesus and I come under an apostolic anointing I bring every spirit under arrest and I command that you will live at the count of three. Now at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. 
and they must leave you. One, two, three. Second, third, 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 third. Spirit husband, every territorial power, ancestral spirits that tie people and families. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out of God's people. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. I cost those powers. I cost those powers. I cost those powers. I cost those powers. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see spirits that come to people in night visions and dreams. Make intercourse with them and destroy their lives. Keep those hands lifted. Lord, where are those people? Let the sword of judgment find them now. Let the sword of judgment find them now. Let the sword of judgment Sisters, lift your hands. A spirit will prefer to oppress a sister than a brother. Because with one sister, there are many people that can become victims. Not because of immorality or anything. It's just the nature, the compelling character of women. I pray right now. Anyone here, whether you know it or not, that is under the influence of any spirit that is not of God. I pray and stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon that spirit. Let fire come upon that spirit. Let fire come upon that spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me that there are people here that start things but never finish. There are families that start things. You've been building a house for 10 years and will never complete it. Lift your hands. The finisher's anointing is going to come upon a few people right now. That grace to start and finish at the count of three is coming upon you for your destiny. Coming upon you for your family. Receive it right now. One, two, three. The finisher's anointing breaking the course of delay. The finisher's anointing breaking the yoke of delay. Projects that have refused to finish. Projects that have refused to finish. Hallelujah. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah.
now for all those who came with sick people you can march to the front now for prayer inside and outside it's time to pray for the sick instrumentalists give us very anointed tunes worship team help us while that is happening if you've not written your prayer request do that quickly And in case you think you need to add something to it, please don't stop playing. While you are seated here, the power of God is visiting you. So be in the spirit, inside and outside, no matter how far you are. Connect in the spirit. You can call your loved ones to quickly send in their requests. There is a God that answers prayer. Please make way for those who are coming out. Jesus is a healer. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I want you to wave goodbye to your infirmities and mean business with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe that Jesus still heals and he will heal you right now. Hallelujah. We'll be very fast about it. Yep. Just give her a chair. Hallelujah. All of you standing here, believe that Jesus will heal you right now. He will give us a sign. And the sign will be from one of you. Something will happen to one of you right now. And that will give us the sign of the stirring of the waters. power of God will come strongly upon one of you right now when that happens then it will allow us to pray for the sick right now thank you Jesus father let there be miracles I see miracles everywhere be discerning be spiritual Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now, this right now. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now.
She will do it again. I see miracles. Right now. Right now. The God yesterday, today, forevermore. Out of my I see miracles. Jesus, he will walk well now, and that witchcraft attack will leave. Ask him if he believes. And tell him to what's this? The medical report. Okay. Father, this is why you anointed us. Every power that is not of God, I set you free from it right now. Jesus, the son of the living God. You will walk normally by yourself. I release upon you the power that comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who have never seen a miracle, watch closely what happens now. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the healing anointing coming upon you. Stomach bloated. Jesus sets you free. I come in the name of the Lord. Tell him to hold my hands. Tell him to hold my hands. Release him. Release him. Walk. Come. Come. Tell him to come.
His glory is back heaven on earth. Oh, oh, oh. Look, at what, look, at, look at what is happening to Him. Heaven. Oh, Jesus, praise God. Heaven on earth. Oh, oh, oh. Something changing, see his glory, things like heaven on earth, something's moving, something's changing, see his glory, things like heaven on earth. Oh, look, he's surprised. What just happened to him? Yes, yes, yes. Let me tell you something. It's not only settled, I pray for you. That not only this will happen, but God will use you to do this. Amen. Same thing. Receive that anointing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baba, tell him from today. No witchcraft power will paralyze and keep him again. Appreciate God. Go back to your seat. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh.
God. God is able to do just what He says He will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. No, don't give up. Don't give up on God. Cause He won't give up. I saw this and it caught my attention. This looks like a medical thing. What's this for? It's supposed to help me stretch my fingers. It's to help you stretch your fingers. Yes, they can't, they are not working. For eight months. Your hand. Yes, for how long? Eight months. Why? It just uh, after I started playing the guitar. You started playing the guitar. And playing then guitar. Long. Yes, sir. See strips, things. He has been playing guitar for as long. His fingers are as fresh as that of a baby. This thing is not because of guitar. This is witchcraft. The devil does not want you to play unto the glory of God. Oh, you if you want play, to play for a club now, this hand will be healed. The devil is a liar. Mm. Hallelujah. That's how he keeps play robbing the church of potential people who worship God. Praise the Lord. You believe Jesus will heal you? All this. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you and the power of God will come upon you. You believe that? And then you move your whole hand Say after me, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the son of the living God. You're the son of the living God. Right now. Right now. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Say it again. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Look at what is happening to his hands. He cannot move them. Go ahead and begin to move. Go ahead, begin to move it. Move it by yourself. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Start moving your fingers. Look at this. He couldn't move his fingers. Look at this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what I'm doing. Hold it like this. Go ahead. Keep moving. Come on, give Jesus praise. Couldn't use this at all. Couldn't even move. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that these hands become perfected. Can you see how the hands are? I mean, so stunned, you cannot even use it. Keep doing it. Keep shaking it. The power has gone and your hand recovers completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise.
run to Him, He will run to us. If we lift our hands, He will lift us up. In a Oh, you say oh, you said of God. Now we say it again. If we call to him, he will run to us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us. Come now, pray. Oh, you say it's of God. Say, oh, see. We call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our head, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, oh, you say it's of God. One time, if we call to him, he will run to us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our head, he will lift Oh, sing, oh, sing, God, to God, God. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. Hail your name, day by day. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. I say yeah, yeah. I say yeah. win a baba. I say yeah. I say yeah. yeah. You don't win no. Higher, 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 oh, oh. Lift 
Jesus higher. Higher, higher. Lift, lift, lift Jesus higher. Miracle walking God. If Jesus higher, 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 if Jesus higher. What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Please, if, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, we are going to give God a hot, hot praise as we pray on this. Three to five minutes of hot praise. Dance out every nonsense out of your life. This name was Worship team, are you ready? This name I like that guy. Man. That ah, no, no. This name is Tima. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Steve. This name is Tima. The bank is in a big Tima. Say. Glory be 
to the Lord in the highest. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands here and begin to just pray in the spirit. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come, O oh God. We have come before the mighty one. I'd like you to pray. There is nothing that our God cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do. says unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come father this request represent the cries of your people this request represent the desires of your people this request represent the challenges of your people this request represents the obstacles that are standing on our path to destiny. These requests threaten the advancement of your kingdom in our lives. We pray in the name that is above all names that every request here be turned into a testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how impossible the situation is, oh God, I pray that one by one, one by one, they will come and testify of your goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Already for some, I heard that Victor's wife that we prayed for has been rushed to the hospital. Labor has started for her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a very prophetic moment 
please everybody inside and outside don't let anyone distract you now lift your hands as we speak hallelujah I love this part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to be blessed the power of prophecy and its ability to enter your life and change things please I want you to believe please I want you to believe no matter how far you are inside and outside I want you to believe hallelujah everything that represents limitation in your life everything that has stood as a limitation against your life and your destiny I come in the name of the Lord God the Lord God Almighty and I declare that in this month of May may that limitation be lifted up your life may that limitation be lifted up your life in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you whatever has stopped the helpers of your destiny from locating where you are whatever wrong advice whatever wrong impression has been given to them about you and your family that has made them refuse to come to your aid makata kata kata shekete kete baka emproto sekete lekata mankratos kataba latapa rebekete kete kete bele de bosh I call them into your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. hallelujah I pray for you this is the season where wisdom will be required for you to move to the next level listen the Bible says through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established through knowledge are the rooms filled with every treasurable thing wisdom for many of us is the key to the next level and this is not human wisdom it's not wisdom by scientific calculation. Strategies that are revealed of the spirit. Strategies that can take you in one day to realms that years have not brought you. I pray the wisdom of the spirit may it come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the keys to a life of stagnation is confusion. Lack of direction. There's nothing as terrible as a man who is clueless about what to do. It can be frustrating when you are clueless. You are at the middle of an ocean and you don't know what to do but there is the spirit of counsel and mind the, the dimension of the operation of the spirit that comes and speaks peace to you in the name that is above all names I pray for you that every decision you need to make every direction that you need to take for this second half of your life to truly be the year of the rain I release upon you that dimension of the spirit of counsel and might marital direction financial direction academic direction career direction no more confusion no more confusion no more confusion
Hallelujah. I pray for you. Part of the keys to stepping into the blessings of the Lord is the ability for your eyes to see opportunities. Hagar, listen, Hagar was in a place. It was a desert, but there was water. Her eyes could not see it. But when the angel of the Lord appeared unto her, suddenly she saw water. I pray you have been passing water and bless you and you have not been seeing it in this month of May. The anointing that opens the eyes of men to opportunities that can bless you. I release it upon you now. I release it upon you now. Where men see obstacles, may you see opportunities. Where men see stumbling blocks, may you see stepping stones. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear has kept many people from moving forward. Fear of everything. Fear of death. Fear of failure. Fear of taking action. Fear of moving. Even when God says move, you say I'm afraid. Start that business, I'm afraid. Take a step to marry, I'm afraid. Do this, I'm afraid. Move on further, I'm afraid. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, every manifestation of fear, every manifestation of fear that has kept your ego on the line, that will not allow you soil your hand in destiny to make progress that keeps you from being afraid every manifestation of fear that gives you a feeling of being embarrassed to take a step i cause that fear now i cause that fear now i cause that fear now When they got to the Red Sea, they were afraid. And when Moses went before the Lord, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs don't go before you. They follow you. You will have to take a step as a sign that you trust God. Take the step and die taking it. Let it be that it was God that killed you. There is no man that took a step in the name of the Lord that did not return with a testimony. For some may trust in horses others may trust in chariots but for us we trust in the name of the Lord and everything we do in the name of the Lord he said whatsoever you do in word and in deed do it in the name of the Lord I pray for you again fear has stopped millionaire businesses from starting up fear has stopped people from applying in places high places they think they are not qualified fear has stopped many of us fear has stopped you from starting the building project who said you are too young so long as god gives you the signal there are some of us all of us are adults in our house but our parents cannot boast of even a simple bungalow because of fear you have ten thousand go and buy a trip of sand and pour it on the ground and leave it here tell the devil i'm coming Look, let me tell you, you will never break through in life till you take the attitude of if I perish, I perish. I pray the boldness, the audacity, the strength, the audacity to ride through without exhaustion, to ride through without fear. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. I pray for your academics. Shekete palabata. The ten times better anointing. Ma tekete tekete teketa. Shekete lepa. The distinguishing anointing. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. Listen. Anyone here. Or any family here that the devil is eyeing for death that is saying you will not see the next month or the end of this year I declare 
by the mystery of the blood the last card the hallmark of God's victory I judge the manifestation of death over your life I judge the manifestation of death over your family you will travel out and come back safe no armed robber will get you on the road no terrorist will attack you on the road when others say there is a casting down it will never be your testimony for you it will be that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus I pray over your finances the grace to pay the price now and to pay the price early for a glorious financial future I release it every spirit of laziness every spirit of carelessness every spirit of lukewarmness every inertia every reluctance to begin to take appropriate financial decisions especially for the brothers I cause it to his root now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those trusting God for a miracle job I tell you the truth when the hand of the Lord upon you is upon you there will be a door that is open some of you are standing in for yourself and some for your loved ones I pray in the name that is above all names may God give them supernatural jobs jobs that they will be proud of in the name of Jesus and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren it's one thing to be rich is one thing to be blessed but it's another thing to be honored honor is not something that money can buy i pray for you that mantle of honor that makes you distinguished and rewarded everywhere you go i release it upon you right now your superiors will honor you your contemporaries will honor you your subordinates will honor you even your enemies will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for everything that has died or is dying here I don't care what it is projects that have died ideas that have died dreams that have died I speak to you in the name of Jesus come back to life come back to life visions that have died assignments that have died passions that have died strengths that have died I call it back to life in the name of Jesus every voice you have heard that has killed your dreams every voice you have heard that has killed your potentials the voice of your past the voice of your failure the voice of mediocre the voice of limitation I silence those voices from your life I silence those voices from your life. I pray for every ministry represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every business represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every job represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every family represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. I pray for every destiny represented here. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. Greater grace and greater glory. The Bible says, Thou anointest my head with oil and it makes my cup to run over. There is an anointing that comes upon your head that translates into increase in your life. Thou anointed my head with oil and that oil makes my cup, my source of supply to run over. I pray for you. The anointing that will give you wisdom. The anointing that will give you creativity. The anointing that will give you ideas, insight, concepts, strategies for wealth. I release it upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you in a name that is above all names every habit every issue every challenge every weight on your life that is eating up your Christian integrity that is eating up your walk with God you love God but there are weights in your life that keep drawing you back to the way of sin I pray for you 
the hand of the Lord lifts you out of that nonsense. The grace of God picks you out of that limitation. Grace to say no to every appearance of evil. Grace to say no to everything that is ungodly. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray a special prayer for our brothers. I curse in your life the spirit of irresponsibility. One more time. I curse from your life and your vicinity every spirit that refuses you from rising as a man that you are. That entitlement mentality that makes you think someone else is responsible for your success. I curse that mindset in the name of Jesus. From today I release upon you grace. Grace to rise and take up the challenge of manhood. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. You will not need to defend yourself. The Lord God Almighty will be your defense. The Lord will anoint you in such a way. That even your enemies will walk towards your progress. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy restoration for everything you have lost. Restoration. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray for you. A new dimension in the spirit. A new level of prayer grace. A new level of word grace. A new dimension of encounters with the spirit of God. Where you are becoming lukewarm. Where you are losing the initial standard of your Christian experience. Where you are already bending. Bending against the things that would make you powerful. I pray for a restoration for you. Where you have lost the voice of the spirit. I command that you be to hear his voice again. Where you have lost zeal for the house of God. I command a restoration for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. All through the remaining part of May. Into June. Let it be a month of testimonies for you. Beginning from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those who have been looking for you to bless you. May this be the season they find you. All those who have received instructions from God to hold your hands. And lift you up with no strings attached. But have not been able to find you. I pray. Listen. Listen. Samuel had already been ordained. I mean Saul ordained to be a king. But he needed to find Samuel. And they kept searching and he could not find Samuel. Until by the wisdom of God they were able to find him. You can be one anointing away from the next level of your life. You can be one prophetic impartation away. You can be one destiny helper away. I pray again for you. Whoever has been looking for you. Like the lost ass of Samson. Of, of Saul. Whoever has been looking for you to bless you and has not found you, may this be the season they find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Nothing will rob your joy this month. This will be, the month of June will be for you a month of joy and laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before miracle service next month, most of all your prayer requests would have been turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for lifting. 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 Hallelujah. Now, keep standing everybody. You're here and you need to return back to Jesus Christ. Keep standing everyone. You've heard the word of the Lord and you know that you need to make it right with Jesus. Maybe this is the first time you are running to Jesus genuinely to commit your life to him. Or you've once given your life to Jesus and you've seen that you are derailing and you need to make it right tonight. We will not end this meeting without giving you an opportunity.
to make Jesus Lord of your life or rededicate your life, wherever you are, make your way to the front right now. We have one minute for this. God bless you. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first to come. Make your way. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming inside and outside. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you as you come. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed. He will give you a new beginning. And he will supply grace. That you will go higher and higher. Higher and higher. Keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Run to Jesus. Keep coming. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't sit back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming to make a decision for Jesus. Just raise your right hand and repeat after me consciously and from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is, this is a confession that brings salvation unto you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I declare from today that you are my Savior and you are my Lord. I receive of your life. I receive of your spirit. And I declare that from today, my sins are washed away. I am a brand new person. The hand of God is upon me. I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not of God, I take authority over it. I receive grace from God to live a victorious Christian life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I want to congratulate you for making this decision. It's the best decision you can make. This decides your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They will have your details. They will welcome you more warmly. And then, we'll communicate to you through them. God bless you. This way. Draw that baby. Baby, this way. No, 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 no. All those who are worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time being here worshipping with us at Koinonia, please make your way to the front. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Celebrate them as they come. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Come on, Koinonia. You can do better than this. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season. It is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 